Good evening, everybody. I'm Pip, and I'm a civil engineer. <laughs> so the uh, practice paid off, but I still detect a hint of sarcasm. Um, nonetheless, I really appreciate the enthusiasm. It's not often I get such a warm response. Let's be honest, who here actually knows what a civil engineer is? Me. <laughs> One smart ass, and I'm going home with him tonight. Um, so, let's be honest, civil engineering, no one really knows. I don't know. I get paid, not much, but I get paid to do it, so I should know. So I've uh, come up with four steps to explain to you what it is I do. But don't be fooled, there is nothing polite about my industry. Way. First joke. <laughs> okay, step one. We're talking about the history boys. So there used to only be one type of engineering, and that was military engineering. But then we got to a point where we'd blown everything up, um, and we realised we needed to build some more stuff. So civilian engineering was created, uh, or civil for short, and what led to the phrase... Military engineers design <laughs> weapons. Oh. <laughs> one, one person who's suddenly gone, oh. <laughs> Educational as well as fun. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so military engineers, uh, they design weapons. Civil engineers design targets. <laughs> so, uh, let's take you back to 1818. There's these three guys. They're in Fleet Street. They meet up in a coffee shop. They're civil engineers, and they come together to help each other out, support each other, and drink coffee. And uh, these, these three guys were actually the creators of the Institution of Civil Engineers. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I know. And so, okay, it's 1818. What do these three cool dudes need to represent their industry? A crest. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who haven't seen the crest, I'm going to get you to use your imagination. So I need you all to close your eyes. It works better if you just close your eyes, OK? Uh, so we've got three guys. They're in their early 20s. And they need an image that symbolizes the industry. This is an industry that's about to get dominated by men for 200 years. <laughs> so we need a strong, proud image with a big shaft and a rounded tip. <laughs> so um, yeah, I know you've all got the same image in your mind. You're all thinking. Lighthouse. <laughs> yeah? Okay, you can open your eyes. It's just, um, my dad's in here tonight, and I didn't really want to make a penis joke with him looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Dad. Your support in my career has been unwavering until tonight. <laughs> okay, anyway, where were we? Crest. So we've, we've got the uh, lighthouse. Lighthouse. <laughs> There's a lighthouse in the middle, standing tall. And either side, we've got some animals. Now, the first animal is obviously it's going to be it's a bird with some nice legs. <laughs> <laughs> any, any guesses as to what... And if you know, please don't shout. It's just ruin my, ruin my game. But if you, any guesses as to what the bird might be? Albatross. Oh, close. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Guys, you've got to think along the lines of a civil engineer. A <laughs> it's a crane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Joke number two. <laughs> <laughs> Next door to this crane, well, we've got a small aquatic mammal. It's a beaver. Yay. Now, I did a bit of research into this, and in 1818, the beaver had already been hunted to extinction in the rivers of the UK. But these pioneers, these visionary three young 20-year-old guys in their coffee shop, they, they weren't going to let that stop them. Because uh, just, just guess what a beaver and civil engineers have in common. Big team. <laughs> I can't believe you can see my teeth from here. No, <laughs> they both build dams. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Institution of Civil Engineers, which has a royal charter, is made up. Their, their symbolic image, which is in a stained glass window in uh, Westminster, if you ever want to go and see it, has a uh, large phallic symbol and two ultimate dad jokes of puns. <laughs> but keeping that in mind, we get to step two. Mud, mud, glorious mud. So if it wasn't for civil engineers, we'd probably all just be rolling around in mud. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but herein lies a, a slight problem that I face on a daily basis in my office. So at my degree, I, I was taught that you can't have hovering buildings. You have to have something on the ground. I don't know if you I mean, not many of you guys will realize that it's a big deal. Oh, 
God, four years, four years. Um, so uh, you've, you've got to sort out your mud. But that, that's where the problem lies. So on a daily basis, I face quite a lot of struggles. I mean, sure, there's the being undermined by my male colleagues. And <laughs> getting asked by a guy on the side of the road whether I'd be his fairy on top of a Christmas tree. Oh. Granted, I was <laughs> like Chris. No, granted, I was, in, uh, I was in high vis, so I did have a glow to me. But no, no, this, this falls by the wayside. Something that I really struggle, like I have to suppress the kind of the outburst that I want to make. I mean, it happened today. I, there I am, I'm sat in my office on my swivelly chair. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> and my uh, colleague turns to me and he, he goes, Pip, I'm having, I'm having a real trouble with my piles. <laughs> see, see what you guys did there? <laughs> I'm not allowed to laugh. I'm not even allowed to smirk because I am a professional. And piles aren't funny. <laughs> no, piles. I'm just gonna keep saying it because you can laugh. It's great. <laughs> But it doesn't stop there, because if they're not worried about their piles, these geotechnical engineers are obsessed with skin friction when boring deep. And then the, the uh, challenging thing to me was, uh, I was having an argument with one of the senior engineers and saying to them, guys, I, uh, uh, he, was, he was testing me on my knowledge about sort of testing foundations. And uh, we were disagreeing about the test name. So I did what any person my age did and uh, walked away, checked Google. Google, what is this test called? And that's when I stood up in the office and shouted, Steve, it was penetration. Wikipedia says so. <laughs> for <laughs> because it's not just the geotechnical engineers these structures guys all about their stiff members for big erections <laughs> and don't even get me started on the size of their flanges <laughs> and the drainage guys their heads are always in the gutter <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they're obsessed with getting good head on their pipes <laughs> a total smut, I promise. These are all engineering terms, but you can see the problem that I face. <laughs> but that leads me to step four. And step four is, you're a freak. Embrace it. People just don't really understand me. Like, I struggle to talk to normal people now. Engineering has ruined my life. <laughs> I wrote a blog recently. It's currently on my Twitter feed, if you'd like to read it. And uh, I was trying to get people to engage with engineering, shake it up a bit and show them what it's all about. So I sent it to my sister, and I said, Joe, can you uh, proofread this for me? She very kindly sent it back with three comments. Dull. Uh. Dull. And her most constructive criticism, what even is this? Dull. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she had a point. <laughs> but I just, just to finish up with you guys, I want to... I want to get your feedback on, on something that other people seem to have struggled to understand, but I feel we've had a connection, so maybe you can help me. Um, it's about my one true love. Um, so, it was the summer of 2012. The Olympics were on TV, and I, I only had eyes for, for one. There I was, stood at the side of the Great Western Main Line, hmm. currently being electrified. <laughs> um, it was just outside Swindon. And there they came towards me, powerful, sleek. My heart began to flutter, and I just, I just knew. My soul sung out. It was the 125 from Penzance to Paddington coming towards me, and I was in love with trains. <laughs> See, I knew you guys would be understanding and accepting. <laughs> but yeah, so basically what I'm saying is that it's okay to have a passion and to love it, and maybe if you look at infrastructure in a strange way, and just otherwise love a good double entendre. <laughs> Civil engineering's for you. Thank you guys. <laughs> I'm